we're seeing people in, in being indoctrinated to believe that creationists can't be scientists. I believe it's all a part of secularists hijacking the word science. Now, what is science? Well, the origin of the word comes from the classical Latin scientia, which means to know. And if you look up a dictionary, it'll say science means state of knowing, knowledge. But there's different types of knowledge, and I believe this is where the confusion lies. You see, when we're talking about origins, we're talking about the past. We're talking about our origins. We weren't there. You can't observe that, whether it's molecules to man evolution or whether it's a creation account. When I mean, you're talking about the past, we like to call that origins or historical science, knowledge concerning the past. Here at the Creation Museum, we make no apology about the fact that our origins or historical science actually is based upon the biblical account of origins. Now, when you research science textbooks being used in public schools, what we found is this. By and large, their origins or historical science is based upon man's ideas about the past, for instance, the ideas of Darwin. And our research has found that public school textbooks are using the same word science for observational science and historical science. They arbitrarily define science as naturalism and outlaw the supernatural. They present molecules to man evolution as fact. They are imposing, I believe, the religion of naturalism or atheism on generations of students. You see, I assert that the word science has been hijacked by secularists in teaching evolution to force the religion of naturalism on generations of kids. So, is creation a viable model of origins in today's modern scientific era? I say the creation-evolution debate is a conflict between two philosophical worldviews based on two different accounts of origins or science beliefs, and creation is the only viable model of historical science confirmed by observational science in today's modern scientific era. The question tonight is, does Ken Ham's creation model hold up? Is it viable? So let me ask you all, what would you be doing if you weren't here tonight? That's right, you'd be home watching CSI. And on CSI, there is no distinction made between historical science and observational science. These are constructs unique to Mr. Ham. We don't normally have these anywhere in the world except here. Natural laws that applied in the past apply now. That's why they're natural laws. That's why we embrace them. That's how we made all these discoveries that enabled all this remarkable technology. Now, Mr. Ham and his followers have this remarkable view of a, a worldwide flood that somehow influenced everything that we observe in nature. A 500-foot wooden boat, eight zookeepers for 14,000 individual animals, every land plant in the world underwater for a full year? I ask us all, is that really reasonable? You'll hear a lot about the Grand Canyon, I imagine, also, which is a remarkable place, and it has fossils. And the fossils in the Grand Canyon are found in layers. There is not a single place in the Grand Canyon where the fossils of one type of animal cross over into the fossils of another. In other words, when there was a big flood on the Earth, you would expect drowning animals to swim up to a higher level. Not any one of them did. Not a single one. If you could find evidence of that, my friends, you could change the world. And here's my concern. What keeps the United States ahead, what makes the United States a world leader, is our technology, our new ideas, our innovations. If we continue to eschew science, eschew the process, and try to divide uh, science into observational science and historic science, we are not going to move forward. We will not embrace natural laws. We will not make discoveries. We will not uh, invent and innovate and stay ahead. So if you ask me if Ken Ham's uh, creation model is viable, I say no. It is absolutely not viable. 